the first IHOP is pretty much why you're here today. Absolutely. Right? It introduced you to the commercial real estate world. Yep. What made you want to start a IHOP franchise? Like no one wakes up one day and says, oh, I'm gonna do it. I wanna get an IHOP franchise. Like that's just not we may say, hey, well, let's go to IHOP for some breakfast. Yeah. Right? But never let me own the IHOP franchise. What made you want to get into the rest of my business? You know, I went to college in Teaneck, Philly Dickinson University. And there was this cute little IHOP on the corner of our university. And me and my friends will always go there. You know, when you come from the club, we used to do late nights over there. Absolutely. I fell in love with IHOP. I love this IHOP. For after the club. <laughs> <laughs> and when I came back to my community, I bought my first house in Irvington. There was no IHOP in Irvington. We had two diners and that was it. And I wanted to bring this experience of, first, I did not know I was gonna open an IHOP. I wanted to do something, I just didn't know it was gonna be an IHOP. So at the time, there was a mayor in Newark, not Newark, in Irvington. I reached out to him and I said, look, listen, there is no national brand in Irvington. And as I was complaining to him, he said to me, oh, I think you should bring an IHOP in Irvington. And I actually have the location for you. There is a diner up the street that is for sale. Why don't you buy it? And at the time, I had a ton of real estate in Irvington, so he knew me. He said, why don't you buy it and make it an IHOP? And I said, well, that's not what I meant. I meant you need to go find somebody to bring an IHOP, not tell me to go do it, because you know, that's what we do. Yeah. We complain. And then don't want to... You, you, you have a problem, but you're not trying to be the solution. I, I ain't trying to fix it. I was looking for him to fix my problem. So he said, matter of fact, I'll take you to the owner right now. I was like, he was like, yeah, come on. You could drive with me, I'll take you to the owner. And I'm saying in this car, I'm just like, this is not how I plan this conversation to go. He, we'd go in the diner and it was a Greek guy. And me and the mayor walk in and he says to the mayor, hi mayor, so good to see you. The mayor is like, hippie, I have somebody that's gonna buy a diner. I know you have it on sale. And he says to the mayor, oh yes, send him in. I'll be happy to talk to him. The mayor was like, yeah, she's right here. And at the time, this was an old Greek guy. He looked at me with such disgust, was like, who, her? She's gonna buy my diner. She can't buy this diner right in front of me. And I said to him, as a matter of fact, yes, I am. Here's $25,000 check, take it off the market. And my attorney is gonna contact you on Monday. And I said to him, by the way, how much you selling this for? He said $1.2 million. And I knew at that time he, would, he had jumped his price up because he didn't want to sell it to me. Yeah. And I went home, I told my girlfriend, I'm like, girl, I done did the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> Somebody made me mad, and I wrote him a check for $25,000. <laughs> and I remember calling him the next day, like, did you cash that check? He's like, yes, it's in the bank. And I'm expecting a contract from your attorney because I'm not giving it back. Wow. So if you know anything about me, I'm a black woman that is not looking to part ways with her $25,000, at least not at that time. So. I called a guy at the time that had the IHOP in Newark. I said, hey, why don't you put an IHOP in Irvington? He's like, nope, my IHOP is doing fine. I'd rather do my IHOP here. And he was so rude about it. And I was like, well, fine. If you don't want to do it, I'll do it myself. I called IHOP, got an application, turned in the application, and they turned me down. They turned me down the first time. They said, you know, we don't think you can run the IHOP. And I'm a believer, and I told you this um, before we got on camera. I'm a believer that if I had a bus to catch, right? And I knew I had a bus to catch, and I walked to that bus, I woke up, I walked to the bus, and I missed the bus, it's one thing. 
If I had a bus to catch and I woke up in the morning and I hustle and bustle and I chase that bus down and I miss that bus, it's okay because rejection is God protection, right? I believe that if you put everything you got in what you want, the universe, the universe is gonna reward you. And I wake up every day with that mindset that I'm gonna wake up in the morning and give it all I got. And if it doesn't happen for me, it's not because I didn't try. It's just God either delaying what's coming for me or it just wasn't meant for me. And I'm okay with that, but I'm not okay with not putting my best foot forward. So when I have turned me down, I call them back. You know how you call like, yo, yo, what's up? No, I ain't doing like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, why you turn me down? Why you turn me down? <laughs> no, I ain't do it like that. I was a little bit nice. <laughs> so when I call I have, I wanted to know what happened. And I just so happened that day, I called and it was the only black woman at I have and she picked up the phone. Wow. She picked up the phone, her name was Nicole. And I talked to her. And after that conversation, she gave me a second chance. That was all God. That was all God. Yeah. And this is why I say two things. Give it all you got, but it's important that we have people that look like us in departments and places where they can impact and influence our outcome. Mm. This story has so many gems in it. One of the biggest gems I just got from this story of your first IHOP was the importance of having relationships with your local politicians. Oh, yes. Your local mayors, right, in all these towns, because the local mayors, they know the business owners because those are the folks who are really voting for them, right? So that mayor in Irvington knew what was moving and shaking. You complaining, he said, okay, I'm gonna make you the solution and took you to the owner of that IHOP and forced your hand, basically. And God's time, it was just right on time for you. At that moment, you were ready for it. I was ready. And politics is local. I know we want to focus on who, what Joe Biden is doing. What po Politics is local. Go to your council meeting, talk to your mayors, talk to your council people, because those are the people that have a direct impact on your life, right? Um, and that story for me is just to let people know that when things are happening to you, sometimes we feel like things are hap things don't happen to you, they happen for you. They happen for you. They happen for you. And I I'm with that. always say to, and because let me tell you, it's hard. It's hard being a black woman in business in America. It's hard, period. We're operating in an ecosystem that just wasn't built for us, right? It's hard. But nevertheless, Madam C.J. Walker came before me without no blueprint. She walked through a forest and left a path. May not have been a clear path, but she left something, a playbook for me to follow, right? So I have to wake up every morning with that force, that force of success. And sometimes that force can be a gentle force. Sometimes that force is a hard force. Sometimes that force is, we need to get this shit done today. Force. And you need to keep people around you that share that same force with you, right? Because it's only in that force that you as a black woman operated in business in America, can you be successful? Anna. Powerful. So when I see black women doing their thing, I salute them. I said, keep paving the way for the next generation of women that are coming behind us. And we can leave that path wide open so they can have a path, a plan in how to do this.